So the gospel says that Jesus came to save. So my question is, what does it mean to be saved? To be saved is to be present in the present, in love with whatever, with whomever, is right in front of you. To be saved is to be here, now, in love with what's right in front of us. I had that thought and I wondered if it's true. And then I remembered a story about a woman to whom Jesus said, you are saved. The story about this woman is in the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel. Here's what I imagine to be her story. There was a woman who people called a sinner. And she had lived in the same village for her whole life. But she barely noticed the village or the villagers because she was anxious, she was distracted, and she was blinded by her many fears. She never looked anyone in the eye. She never stopped long enough to notice what was going on all around her. Her sin was simply that she did not love what is right in front of her. She was not present to her own life. Her mind, you see, was constantly occupied by her regrets about the past and her worries, her worried hopes, that is, for a better future. She had never, as I say, been present in the present. Her heart was always pounding very quickly in her chest. And her breathing was constantly shallow and rapid. She walked around, this woman did, squinting her eyes against the sunlight. And she winced almost constantly at the dull pain that seemed to be ever-present right in the front of her forehead. She wanted better for herself, but she felt powerless to change. Then one day she heard that the rabbi named Jesus was coming to her town. She heard that he was to share a meal in the home of a man named Simon. And she didn't know exactly why. But when she heard the rabbi Jesus was coming to town, she felt a stirring somewhere deep inside her body. And then a thought, I must go to see Jesus. So she did. She showed up that day at Simon's house. She was unannounced, and she carried a heavy alabaster jar full of perfumed oil. Head down, she walked right past the servant at the front door to Simon's house and straight into the big room where Jesus and a bunch of other men were reclined around a table. She moved quickly without thinking about it because she knew that if she thought about it, she would turn and run for fear. She went straight to Jesus, and she knelt at his feet. She bowed her head, and the tears came. She wept a torrent of tears, and her tears fell on Jesus' feet. And then without thinking about it, she lowered her lips to Jesus' feet, and she kissed his feet over and over and over again. And for the first time in her life, she did something that should have been embarrassing, but she felt no shame. She couldn't see Jesus because her head, her head was bent to his feet. But had she been able to see our Lord, she would have seen his smile as he looked down upon our woman. All, in the men, all the men in the room wanted to speak, but they didn't. They wanted to protest her presence, but they didn't because a great power radiated out from Jesus and stilled their tongues without saying a word. Without saying a word, the woman confessed all her sins to Jesus. Without saying a word, she confessed that she had always been absent to her own life. And then she took the heavy alabaster jar and tipped it over and poured the perfume on Jesus' feet. Then she took her long hair and wiped the perfume with her hair. And then Jesus very gently put his hand on the woman's shoulder. 
He put his other hand gently under her chin. And with that, she lifted her eyes to his eyes. And Jesus spoke. And he said, go. Go in peace, dear one. On this day, you have learned to love. Indeed, he said, you have shown great love. Daughter of God, you are saved. And the men in the room opened their mouths to speak, to protest. Didn't Jesus know this woman's reputation? They thought in their own heads. And Jesus raised his hand to them. And the voices of these men caught in their throats. The woman stern stood and turned to go. She walked outside of that place, Simon's house, into the village in which she had lived for her entire life. She looked up to the blue sky above, and the sun bathed her face with light. And for the first time, she didn't squint. She closed her eyes and she smiled, soaking in the present moment like a bath. And then she opened her eyes and she looked all around. And she noticed immediately that everything looked different. Everything in this village she'd known her whole life looked different. It was slow and beautiful. First thing she saw was a bird. She watched a bird fly across the yard. It landed on a small patch of grass a few feet in front of her. And the bird picked up a little piece of red ribbon that someone had dropped. And with the ribbon in its little bird's beak, the bird flew a short distance up to a limb on an olive tree, and the bird looked down at the woman. Underneath the tree, the woman saw a young child. Was he there when I walked into Simon's house? She hadn't seen him before, but now she saw a young child stacking smooth stones into a little pile under the shade of the olive tree. And the child, a little boy, was talking to himself in a very animated way, the way little boys do when they play, about a king who was going off to war to protect a village from an evil wizard. And the woman thought to herself, the boy is building a king's castle with the stones. Then across the yard, the woman saw a father and a son working together. The father was running a thin blade across a long piece of wood and a paper-thin slice of the wood curled up behind the blade as it moved. And then the father handed the blade to his son. The woman watched this, and the father said to the son, Now you try. And the son took the blade and started in on the wood, cutting it first too deep. So the father put his hand on the boy's hands, and together father and son gently guided the sharp blade across the surface of the wood. The woman thought to herself, the father is teaching his son the family trade. Then she thought, I don't think I even knew that man had a son before this day. The woman looked all around the village, taking in the details of this place she'd lived for all her life as if she was seeing it all for the very first time. Then the woman took a breath. Do you remember that I said her breathing was always shallow and fast? The woman took a breath. She breathed in deeply. She held the breath. Then she blew the breath out a long, slow exhale. And playfully, she puffed her cheeks out and blew the breath noisily across her lips. And then she laughed and took another breath. And it seemed silly, but she felt like she was sure of it. Was she breathing for the very first time like a baby just birthed into this world? And as she exhaled, she felt the muscles in her face relax. She realized her headache was gone. And then she had a sudden urge to get a drink of water. I need water. Give me water, she thought to herself. And she made steps across the yard towards the village well. And suddenly the bird with the red ribbon flew down from the limb, dipping low right in front of our woman. Then the little bird arced into the sky, flying higher and higher, higher until the woman lost sight of the little bird in the sunlight. And she walked on slowly, looking all around, taking in every detail of this place that she'd always lived but never seen. It was a kingdom. She lived in a kingdom. 
And everyone in the village, this kingdom was royalty. The bird flying high in the sky was a princess. The ribbon was treasure fit for a queen. The little boy stacking smooth stones was a famous adventurer. The father was a master artisan. And the little boy, a prince being raised to be a king. And the kingdom of heaven, the woman thought, was all around her. And it wasn't a thought, it was a reality. And at the well, she'd get water to quench a deep thirst she'd had for her entire life. You see, the rabbi Jesus had said to her, go in peace, go in peace, daughter of God. You are saved. And indeed, thought the woman, I am saved. And now I can see. And what I see, I love. I love it all. Then she had a thought, love, love, love is all. She had that thought. Then she said it out loud. She said out loud as she very well skipped off to the well. Love is all. And she couldn't contain her laughter as she skipped off to the well. She had to tell someone. She had to tell someone what Jesus had said to her. And she had to tell someone that she could see today. So she wondered, who is at the well? Who is at the well? And whoever was there, whoever it might be, she thought to herself, I cannot wait to see them and to love them and to tell them that I am saved. Amen.